Hey guys, it's Lisa back with another video for you for Lisa Wise Designs. And today we're going to make one of the small projects that we had in the Make It Go Round for May May Made It. If you were able to be in that class, it was so much fun. If not, I'm gonna be showing you this week and next week the two small projects that I did. This is gonna hold some little bitty treats, so whatever type of chocolate or a folded up you know, piece of money that will be really cool or a check can go in here. It's not quite big enough for a standard size gift card, but you can put some really cute treats in this to go into a Christmas stocking or just a nice way, like I said, to give maybe a $50 bill to a niece or nephew that you kind of fold up and put in there. So I'm going to get this out of the way. Um, you're gonna need a six by six sheet of paper, and don't worry, the cutting guide will be in the description of this video below. And also, you're going to need a clothespin. You know these teeny tiny clothespins that are a little bit less than an inch long? I got mine at the Dollar Tree, I think. And then I took eight to 10 inches of a coordinating baker's twine, and I opened up the um, clothespin, and I just kinda tied a bow on one side, that way, you know, once we're ready, we can just clip that onto our project. Um, the ones that we did in Make It Go Round, we use some of the coordinating paper and I used this punch with all the different pieces there to put together. But today I want to use up some papers that I've had um, in a couple of my past projects and I have leftover stickers and little pieces of paper. So that's what I'm gonna try to do today. So since this one's already cut and scored, we'll put this one together and then I'll start from the very beginning with some Christmas paper and we'll do that one also. This one is from that Tula and Norbert photo play paper. Um, it kind of has a spring, maybe Easter vibe to it, but it's got some beautiful paper in it that it can be used year round. This is orange and white dot, but I really want to showcase this really pretty plaid off. So I'm going to move this to the side. So, like I said on the next one, we will cut it and score it together. But this is not symmetrical. You've got some different size um, blocks that are scored here. So here, this is a little bit better to see. This is what I have done, kind of drawn out for you. This is what my paper looks like. These lines are score lines on my other one. So see you have this half an inch by half inch square at the top right. That's This is the orientation I'm going to use. And then on the opposite side, diagonally, you have a one inch by one inch square. So this is how the paper is oriented. And then you have these long elongated rectangles there. So this is what the paper looks like. I know it's a little hard to see on camera sometimes. So what we're going to do next, here's another example. I'm gonna put tape on the right hand side all the way down and tape on this flap and I'm gonna cut away a rectangle. And these other score lines I'm going to cut to make flaps. So on here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put tape here. I'm gonna cut this away. I'm gonna put tape here. And then these are gonna become flats, so maybe it's a little easier that way for you to see. I'm gonna make sure that half inch by half inch square is up at the right hand corner so I know I got my paper oriented right. I'm gonna start at the bottom and there are three vertical score lines, so I'm just gonna cut those up to the horizontal score line, just like that. And then this one, this elongated, uh, this is just a rectangle, right? It's probably one inch by a half of an inch. I'm just gonna cut that one totally away. And that's what you should have. So here's my sample here, if you can kind of see that. So then I'm gonna put tape here and on this first flap here. So where I'm putting the tape is on the side that I do not want to see. And when we do the next one, we cut and score that one. I'll kind of go over that also, but I'm putting the tape on the side that I don't want to be seen. This is totally going to be hidden. We put our little treat box together. That out of the way. All right, so next, you can see there are one, two, three, four score lines running vertically, sorry. These score lines running vertically, and I'm going to just go ahead and work those score lines. It's a little difficult to see on this pretty pattern paper, but they are there. And then we're gonna kind of be ready to put this together, it's super easy. So as you can see, it's already wanting to start to go together like this. So, I mean, I guess you could put it together this way if you wanted to. 
this just might not be in the right place for it, but I'm gonna work my score lines back the opposite way. All right, so now I want this plaid to be showing. So, with the tape on the right hand side, I'm going to score on this, I'm going to fold on the second score line. I'm gonna fold it flat on the second score line, maybe. <laughs> I could put it down on my work surface here, be better. All right, I'm folding on that second score line. So now all that's showing is this flap of tape on it. So I'm just gonna take, the, that is not a pokey toe. I'm gonna take the tape and pull it off and then fold it right onto that piece, just like that. There we go. So now it can kind of pop up to be our little box here. So this is what we uh, cut those slits in at the bottom. So I'm gonna fold the short pieces in, and I'm gonna fold the longer piece in that does not have tape, and then what's left over is the piece that does have tape. So your tape's already there. So I'm gonna go ahead, take the tape off. Easy peasy. These are so much fun. If you went ahead and cut and scored, a few of these, you could sit down with children, even young children, really easily to put them together. All right, so as you can see, maybe you can't, let me try. There is a, a little score line, a half an inch down, and then there's a score line here, probably an inch and a half down. I'm gonna put my fingers on the side of this box, I'm gonna push in, and it's gonna kind of find those score lines, just really easy. And then I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth and find that top score line, and this just kind of, goes ahead and makes that shape of that milk carton or treat box look by having that score line here. And that's really it, it's done, it's made. So I have some Hershey Kisses here. I think I've got about, 15, I don't know how many I have, 15? Let's see, one, two, that's five, seven, that's 10, so I have 14 go in there. I could put, like I said, a $50 bill if that's what I was going to give. And then I already had these pre-made. These are those um, inch clothes pins. I already tied some twine on. And see, you don't even have to close the top if you don't want to. Of course, you could glue it shut if you wanted to. And then when they pull it apart, it would just come apart. So also what I have left over is some really cool stickers. So I thought that would be fun to kind of see what will fit on here. This little guy will fit, this little guy will fit. Oh, so much of it. Um, let me see, let me see what I want to put on here. I think he is fun sitting on the little toad, toadstool thing here. And let's see, we could make him a little place to sit by cutting some of my stickers off. And since I've done with, I've done two or three projects out of this paper, I'm not going to be worried about trying to, to keep it or trying to do any more with it. So I'm just gonna put that down. I just kind of trimmed it off. And now he's got like a little ground to sit on here. And let's see if there's anything else. Nomi, isn't that cute where it says Nomi? The Simple Life, Secret Garden, there's all kind of things on here that would go. So this is a nice way to just kind of use up things that are in your stash. Let's see, maybe I could do it like that. That is very cute. I can kind of pull these together. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just a straight line girl. Isn't that cute? Just kind of stacking these on top of each other. Kind of make it a little scene. Okay, let's look at the Christmas line. I think that one would be fun to do too. Clean up my little area here. Put him over here. So now we'll do the whole steps together. This is another project I did probably last summer, I think, that had Santa's workshop. I didn't have much paper left over. Or maybe, no, I think this was this year, anyway. So, you know, it has these huge graphics on the back, and if you're doing a 12 by 12 album, that might be perfect. I, I didn't know really how to use much of this unless I fussy cut him out. And this was my least favorite paper in that pack, even though I must say it has a little sausage dog here, or maybe I just didn't want to cut it, but I'm going to use it now. So all I'm going to do, this is my last piece of paper left out of there. I'm going to cut, cut off my branding strip, but then I'm going to cut... I guess I didn't have to do that. 
<laughs> a six by six piece off of this. Okay, that's all I need that for. And I'm gonna grab my scoring tool here. So what I'm going to do is the side that I don't want to see, I'm gonna flip over. No, yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm going to cut, I mean, I'm going to score and take the opposite side of the pattern that I want to show. That makes sense. Yes, I want to see this, so I'm going to score on this side. This is why this was out. All right, so here's the scoring. It's quite a bit, so I'll go slow, but I'll also have it linked below. It's six by six, so on one side, you're going to do one inch, two and three quarters, three and three quarters, and then five and a half, okay? So since this is not, like I said, a mirror image, we kind of need to score in a certain way. So while it's still in my scoreboard, I'm just gonna put an R right here for right and a B for bottom. Okay, that's all I did. I kept it in the scoreboard and I just made a notation, R and B, like rhythm and blues, but not. <laughs> for this because when I turn my paper, I want the right side to go to the bottom when I'm gonna score. Okay, that's the only reason I did that. So now I'm gonna go at one inch, four and a half, and five and a half, all right? So all I did was I started here. I did my first set of score lines. I wrote right hand side and then bottom because I want this now to be at the bottom of my scoreboard and then did my second set of score lines. That's all I did. All right. So now I've got, I've got my orientation. I've got this on the right side. So now you can see I've got that half an inch by half inch square here. The one inch by one inch square is here and then the rectangles are on this side just like in my previous examples. It looks like this. Kinda wanna make sure I got my orientation right, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and start. I'm gonna cut off the rectangle in the bottom right-hand corner. Okay, I just thought that might be the easiest thing to go ahead and mark since this is the back and then you'll know exactly how I'm turning it. Because if you do it wrong or do it, maybe not wrong, but the other way, then it's gonna be a different taping. You're gonna tape on the opposite side. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. So at the bottom again, there are three other score lines. So I'm just gonna cut vertically on those score lines up to the first horizontal score line, just like that. So now I've got my little flaps. Okay. Now I'm just going to go and do those vertical score lines. Just work the score lines here. Okay, and I'm gonna do it the opposite way. Just doing the vertical ones. I'm not doing the horizontal ones. So now tape. I'm putting tape on the right side, right where it had that R and B written on it, all the way from top to bottom on the right side. I tape. And then the only piece of tape I'm gonna put on here is the first flap at the very bottom. So that first flap or the flap that's closest to the right hand side. So this is what I've got. This is what it looks like here just on this first flap and then all the way on the right hand side. Okay, so now we can just assemble this together. I'm gonna to take off the tape on the right side and I'm going to fold on the second score line. So now all that's left showing is this one little flap so I can just fold it down into place. There we go, just like that. Now you've got your little box. I'm gonna turn it to the bottom. Fold in the short ones, fold in the long one that has no tape, and all that's left is this one with tape. Sorry, the sun has come out. And let's see, maybe that'll help where you can kind of see a little more color here. And now tape that down. It's so easy and so much fun. So I'm gonna put my fingers where this one inch score line's at the top and kind of push in and then push down to kind of close that. And then I just kind of do a back and forth motion like this to kind of make this more prominent, like so. All right, and you can put stuff in there. You can tie your twine onto a little clip. You can do all kind of little things here, right? There's much, all kind of 
<laughs> Did you see that thing fly off? There's all kind of white things you can put on here to keep it closed. <laughs> Leave it to me with uh, doing this on camera for that to work. Okay, I'm gonna make this a little bit, do this a little more easy. There we go. <laughs> so you can see the ending to that. That's just the story of my life. So of course I had stickers left over. So I want to kind of see what I had left here. Because, oh, did my sausage dog make it on here? Oh, he's right here on the side. He's so cute. Oh, he's there on the bottom. So let's see. I've got a few things here we could use. This is North Pole 25th. This little this little guy is really cute. Oh yeah, I'm gonna hold on to him, put him on the side. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing. I think I'm gonna get some of this red off the bottom. And trim up the side to kind of make it here where it's a little bit straight on the bottom. And then turn it over and trim it. There we go. Not exactly straight, but that's okay too. So I'm gonna use this guy. Let's see what he would look like with some foam tape on him. I think this would be cute. I should have got out my long scissors. I need to remember that. And then next go around, how cute that would be. So now I can put him here. Well, he's got a little ground to stand on. And let me see if there's anything else. I usually like to put like a little saying could put the 25th behind him or the North Pole. Something that could go like, oh, isn't this cute where it says 25th? Oh, this would've been cute for a little ground too, wouldn't it? So cute. Okay. I'm loving it. There we go. So I just kinda use this North Pole that looks like an arrow put the 25th and a, and a green snowflake, and then I put him um, on some foam. Isn't that cute? Just to kind of use up what you have, because we know we're definitely not going to get rid of any of our uh, projects that we have left over, so here we go. I can tell which one is the heaviest one, all the stuff in it. Aren't these cute? So cute, and they can look so different depending on what you put into them. So if you make one of these, please go over to my Facebook group, Lisa Wise Designs, and share a photo with me. These are adorable. Don't forget the cutting guide is right below this video. And I'll see you guys next week, and we will do the little match uh, book one. Yeah, the matchbox one will come next week. Thanks, guys. Bye.